1994 Acura Legend GS sedan six-speed manual. As of 2020, I've had this Legend for 12 years. I picked it up in May of 2008 after having stalked the owner, basically the prior owner, for a number of years. The backstory, and I think I shared this in a prior video, was that I had seen this car parked in the town where I was going to school at the time, did a double take and a triple take and drove around the block to see it. And uh, my suspicions were confirmed when I saw that it was a stick shift. And in my thought process of leaving a note versus um, waiting it out for the owner to arrive, he actually came out of a restaurant at that very moment. And we exchanged contact information and so on. And eventually I uh, convinced him to sell it to me. I put up my stand here. This is a similar one to the uh, piece that I displayed along with my Integra GSR. This car was also on display at the Japanese Automo Automotive Invitational in 2019, just this past year, out at Pebble Beach. So it was a real honor to be able to display this car as part of that event, and I hope to continue to participate in future years. I'm battling with a little bit of wind tonight as the sun sets here in Phoenix, but I thought I would at least go ahead and show you the interior. I did have to do a little bit of work on this car. The carpet was stained, the door panels had holes punched in them. It had non-original floor mats. Check out this plastic stuff that I added, uh, the dealer wrap. These door seals are actually uh, specific to the Japanese domestic market legends, which are, are or were marketed as Honda legends overseas. I haven't done interior on this one. This is original leather. And uh, I think part of the reason why it stayed so nice is that the car lived a good chunk of its life in non-desert areas. It was actually in Chicago from 1994 until 2001, and then Northern Utah until 2008 when I brought it to Phoenix area. Let's get a glance under the hood. So just like the Legend Coupe is powered by, this is a similar 3.2 liter, 230 horsepower Type 2 V6, completely stock. This car has just a touch under 162,000 miles on it. And I've put on about 30,000 of those is all over my 12 years of ownership. It really is, uh, if I had to call any specific car my garage queen, uh, this might be it. Backseat of the car is pretty good size for a sedan of its time. Again, the interior is all original here. I haven't done anything aside from the floor mats, really. These cars had a really handy little armrest here. The, uh, the US domestic market legends didn't get a ski a trunk pass through, but the Canadian ones, I believe, did. Out in the back, we have a typically cavernous trunk. A lot of room in here. This was a special order floor mat from an aftermarket company that's no longer around. They actually did the embroidery here and uh, really nice high quality uh, carpeting that I that I had done. This car does have the optional six disc uh, CD changer in the trunk. And good news here is there is a centerfold with my exact car. There it is. Let's check it out. All right, there we are. There's the brochure. There's the car. I think I'm getting good at this game. A couple more quick things to showcase back there. Of course, my records book. Can't have a car without it. Uh, I do have a full-size spare tire in both of my legends, so unlike the stock donut that it came with, uh, I much prefer to have a full-size regular wheel in there. 
there's kind of an interesting story behind the license plate itself. So for years I drove around with this car on TH Acura for my initials because Acura wasn't available. But in the state of Arizona, if a certain tag combination goes unregistered for a number of cycles, I think it's three years, it comes up for grabs. So I went ahead and picked it up as soon as I uh, verified that it wasn't taken. The plate itself too is period correct. Uh, Arizona up until about 1997 used this maroon color uh, scheme. Now as much of a purist as I am for stock cars, I actually did modify this one just slightly when I picked it up. This exhaust is aftermarket. It's from a company called Stromung and I actually really like how it sounds. Uh, it's not obnoxious on the freeway and it has a nice growl at idle here. I do also have the optional factory fog lamps, which are sort of rare to come by. This car, as it's equipped, looks like it came out to just a little over 41,000 bucks 26 years ago. Again, a replica sticker that I was able to reproduce thanks to the help of my friends Chris and Jason. So thanks guys. This is also an aftermarket or modified steering wheel. So I had special wood trim added here to the top and the bottom to match the burl wood in the car. I think it's just a really cool touch to add a little bit of luxury to the interior.